We've arrived at the third and final tutorial about the mind. Possibly the most crucial one yet. Uh, but first, in answer to a couple of questions, uh, the mind stuff is, is fine, it's kind of abstract, I get it. When are we going to start uh, doing more theremin technique? When are we going to learn more, more ways of playing and work with the instrument itself? We're going to do a little bit of that later. But for now, it's that third mindset. And it's easy. It's two words. Have fun. Now, <laughs> that's, that's really easy to say. It's very simple. Uh, and it's, and uh, when you think about it, it just sounds kind of wimpy. Well, just have fun. But nobody ever tells you why that's important. And nobody ever tells you how. How. So that's about to change. Now, Many of us have less than positive associations with music and learning a musical instrument and practicing because of things from our childhood. When I was six years old, I was told, you're going to play the piano and you're going to take lessons. And when I was in fourth grade, I was given a clarinet and told, you're going to play the clarinet, you're going to take lessons and join the school band, okay? And that meant having to practice, and I spent years not practicing the piano and not practicing the clarinet, at least not what my teachers wanted me to practice. Those little elementary books, they just went out the window, and I was always very humiliated and embarrassed when I tried to play, let, to play the stuff that was assigned to me in the lessons from my teachers. I was horrible. It was very embarrassing. Meanwhile, during the week while I was practicing, I was trying to play stuff that I was really interested in. I remember trying to play clarinet along with a Haydn symphony. Never once did a teacher ask me, what would you like to play? What are you interested in playing? What can we work on together? That might have been uh, fun. But in your case, it's different. This is very different in your case because you and your mind, you decided, I want to get a theremin. You decided, I want to play a theremin, I want to learn to play a theremin. And you were in all, all in on that, right? And you got it home, it got delivered, you set it up, you hooked it up, you turned it on, you put your hand in that control space the first time, and you made a noise or tried to play a song, and what was your reaction? Was it, oh, yes, this is exactly what I expected, or was it, man, I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this, or was it, woo, this is hard, how the heck do I control this thing? Now, whatever, that first impression, that first mindset, that first reaction was to playing the theremin, it has shaped, at least in part, everything you have done from that point to this. Everything. So, was it, oh, I've got this, or at least I know it's within my grasp, or is it, Ooh, this is hard. How am I going to do this? <sighs> Whatever it was, it's still with you. So, how do you have fun? All right, let's take it. A, B, C. The first step to really having fun when you're playing your theremini is to ask yourself, has my mind bought into the cliché, the cliché myth, that the theremin is the hardest instrument in the world to play? I'm not touching anything. There's nothing to touch. I have to find everything in the air. It's the hardest instrument in the world to play. And magazines and commentary and, and TV shows and books and even films and even members of the community, the theremin community itself, reinforce this myth. It's the hardest instrument in the world to play. And when we reinforce this myth, it's kind of cool because as a thereminist, we feel kind of cool that we can play the hardest instrument in the world to play. <laughs> it's a myth. I have dedicated decades to demonstrating it as a myth, and I will show it to you as I've shown you before, I'm sure. But we're going to do it again. But first, 
Let, let's take woodwinds, uh, clarinets and flutes and bassoons, any woodwinds. You've got to develop an embouchure. You've got to be able to get your tooth on here and, this, and with a flute, you've got the and you've got the saxophone and the bassoon is a double reeded instrument which you've got to your breath. You've got to control your breath so that you can play all these notes and, and brass instruments. Now, a trumpet has only three vowels down. Well, it's the embouchure. With the trumpet, you've got that purse lip, that, 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 that thing that you've got. Uh, a trombone has seven basic positions on the slide, and each position is capable of playing anywhere from eight to ten notes. Instruments. How about a violin uh, or a viola? And have you ever picked up a bow? And you've got to have this wonderfully sensitive pressure just right on the string, or it's going to screech. Which notes do you play on which strings? All of these instruments. There isn't a single one of them that you can pick up and play. But the theremin? The first principle. It's easy because of the first principle, which I've said a number of times. Anywhere I hold my hand still in the control space is a musical note. Anywhere I hold my hand still is a note. And if I choose where I hold my hand still in a certain order, I have a song. That fundamental first principle is easy. Knowing that, first step to having fun. Let's move on. B. I've just made a case for the theremin being one of the easiest instruments to play. And I'd also like to submit that it is one of the top three silliest instruments ever invented. Why? Because all a theremin does is this. That's it. That's the extent of its repertoire. Until you take control of it. And it is silly, and believe me, it appears very silly to others. A silly instrument looks silly when you play. Another step to having fun. Finally, C. I said at the beginning, one of the most important mindsets to help you fast track your abilities as a thereminist is to approach this instrument and have fun. How do you have fun? Well, items A and B ought to start preparing your mind for having fun. But to really put it over the top, to paraphrase the wonderful philosopher, theologian, author, teacher, Alan Watts. You don't do a musical instrument. You don't work a musical instrument. You play a musical instrument. The key word here is play. Play with your theremin. And I mean play, like a kid plays, like a kid playing a game. Play with your theremin. And here are three ways to do it for free. The first is play with your theremin. For the first two minutes of your practice, don't try to don't try to regiment yourself into playing a song or scales or fingering technique. Just go. Play. Play. Make different sounds. You can do different shapes. What does a circle sound like? What does a square sound like? What does a triangle sound like? Have fun. Experiment. Make yourself laugh. Play. Next. Use your theremin to do impressions. Now, I'm going to refrain from demonstrating these. You discover them for yourself. The theremin is great at imitating whales. The theremin is great for imitating birds. Can you sound like a dog? Can you meow like a cat? Can you make your theremin sound like a creaky door hinge opening a door? Use the different presets. See what other impressions you can make with a theremin. Can you imitate the inflections of a human voice as opposed to the words? Like if somebody goes, I don't know, can you make the theremin go, mm hmm? See if you can do it. Play with your theremin by doing impressions. 
and last, and this is absolutely priceless. You need to do this. Share your theremin. Share it with people. When company comes over, have it set up, bring it out, let people try the theremin for themselves. I guarantee you, when grown-ups first stand in front of the theremin for the very first time, you are going to see something that people rarely, rarely get to witness. And I have seen this happen in the subway stations in New York City. I've seen it happen in art centers and libraries where I've played. When people try the theremin for themselves, the walls just come down and they all turn into children. Some of them are intimidated or, oh, I don't know what to do with this. But eventually people drop their inhibitions and they start playing. And you get to witness that. If you have children, if you have grandchildren, if your neighbors have children, when company brings their kids over, get that theremin out and let kids try it. You want to see lack of inhibition. You want to see people play with that theremin? Watch children. Either way, either way, grown-ups or children, you have a chance to see something and witness something people rarely get to do and you also get to share in the fun and also finally you get to see what it feels like to be the catalyst for people having wonder and awe instilled in them right before your eyes. You're the one that brought it out. You're the catalyst for this. You have contributed to people having this amazing time with the theremin. And all of this fun that other people are having is contagious. It will inform your mind. It will show you just what kind of fun is possible. And it will inform all of your practice and your entire approach to the theremin. The end. Next time, we start with the body, this physical container.